Hello everyone, welcome to Reactify Labs. In this video, we will talk about GraphQL. GraphQL is graph query language. So, before diving into the technicalities of it, let's see why we need GraphQL. Okay, and uh, what is the real world example that we can uh, give for GraphQL? Okay, so um, let's say you want to order a pizza okay so what you want is let's say you want to order a pizza which has um, mm, onion and tomato okay but the pizza store has like different types of pizzas they have onion tomato but along with that they have some more things paneer um, mm, chicken <clears throat> like similar things along with onion and tomato okay so even though you want a pizza with only onion and tomato still you get other toppings also which you might not want right so graphql solves this problem by giving you only the pizza with onion and tomato so in real world if it's like if there was no graphql there would no there would be no way for you to get uh, a pizza with only onion and tomato which graphql solves okay so this uh, is usually um, observed in rest so in rest even if you want let's say one data you still get a set of things which are included along with that one thing right so for example let's say you are looking for a book okay uh, you have to get a book which has let's say uh, books ISB and international international standard book number it's something like XYZ okay and you have to get like for this book what is the name of the author okay so if you use rest you will get a lot of things you will get like the book name author name ISBN and a lot of things right mm, like the year in which it was published uh, who who is the publisher a lot of things you will get but in graphql if you want to do if you want to get only the author you will get only the author okay so this is what graphql does this is what graphql is helping us achieve okay mm, yeah now that we know the why of graphql let's focus on what and how okay so before that let's discuss the structure that we are going to follow today so we will start with the introduction to graphql okay then we will talk about graphql schema and types graphql schema and its types next we will see querying with graphql querying with graphql after that we will see mutation operations okay next we will see the difference between graphql and rest okay after that we will see implementing graphql <clears throat> next we will move to the advantages of using graphql after that we will see the challenges and considerations associated with graphql and we will end it with real world examples okay great so now that the structure is ready let's start with the introduction introduction so graphql is a query language for apis graphql is a query language for apis and a runtime for executing those queries and a runtime for executing those queries by utilizing a type system defined by the user 
by utilizing a type system defined by the user okay so it was developed by facebook in 2012 and it was later open sourced in 2015 graphql aims to address the limitations of traditional rest apis by providing a more efficient and flexible approach to data fetching graphql enables clients to request precisely the data they need allowing for efficient data retrieval and reducing over fetching and under fetching issues commonly associated with rest apis okay now let's talk about graphql schema and types graphql schema and types so first schema definition at the heart of graphql is the schema okay schema is a declarative declarative description of the api's capabilities including the types of data that can be queried and the relationships between them okay next is type system graphql defines a strong type system where each piece of data is represented by a specific type such as scalar object interface union enumeration and input object and type definitions developers define custom types and their fields within the schema specifying data structures and relationships for querying and mutation operations okay next we will see querying with graphql querying with graphql so first we will see the query language query language actually yeah so graphql introduces a powerful and expressive query language that allows clients to precisely specify the data they need from the server okay so first thing is typed queries typed queries unlike traditional rest apis where endpoints return fixed data structures graphql allows clients to define exactly which fields they want to retrieve eliminating overfetching of data and next is field selection <coughs> clients construct queries by selecting fields from the available types defined in the graphql schema enabling granular control over the shape of the response data next is query syntax graphql queries are constructed using a hierarchical syntax resembling the shape of the data being requested here comes first field selection clients specify the fields they want to retrieve including nested fields for traversing relationships between data entities and aliases and segments graphql supports aliases for renaming fields and fragments for reusing common query structures enhancing query readability and maintainability and next comes nested queries one of the key advantages of graphql is its support for nested queries enabling clients to fetch related data in a single request okay so here first comes deeply nested relationships deeply nested relationships clients can traverse complex data structures and retrieve deeply nested fields without the need for multiple round trips to the server and efficient data fetching <clears throat> by allowing clients to specify nested queries graphql reduces the number of network requests required to fetch interconnected data thus improving effi efficiency and performance okay next let's see the mutation operations
फर्स्ट वन इज डेटा मॉडिफिकेशन इन एडिशन टू क्वेरिंग डेटा ग्राफ क्यूएल सपोर्ट म्यूटेशन ऑपरेशन फॉर क्रिएटिंग अपडेटिंग एंड डिलीटिंग डेटा ऑन द सर्वर ओके सो हियर फर्स्ट कम्स क्रिएट अपडेट डिलीट Mutations allow clients to perform write operations on the server side data including creating new records updating existing ones and deleting records as needed and next is transactional semantics Mutations in GraphQL are typically executed within the context of a transaction ensuring that multiple write operations either succeed or fail together thus maintaining data consistency okay next is mutation syntax define mutation types first okay mutations in graphql follow a similar syntax to queries but are used to perform write operations okay first define mutation syntax uh, actually mutation types not syntax developers define mutation types in the graphql schema specifying the input parameters and return types for each mutation operation and then they execute mutations execute mutations clients construct mutation requests specifying the mutation type and any required input parameters to initiate write operations on the server and then side effects so mutations can have side effects on the server such as modifying database records or triggering business logic which should be carefully managed so first is data integrity <clears throat> developers must ensure that mutation operations maintain data integrity and consistency handling edge cases and error conditions gracefully and next validations and authorizations validation and authorization mutations should be validated and authorized based on business rules and permissions preventing unauthorized access and data corruption okay now let's talk about graphql uh, the difference between graphql and rest so we will see graphql versus rest first is in data fetching graphql allows clients to request precisely the data they need eliminating overfetching and underfetching issues commonly encountered in restful apis okay <clears throat> so two things here first is efficient data retrieval efficient data retrieval So with GraphQL clients can specify the exact fields they require avoiding the retrieval of unnecessary data and reducing network overhead. And next is flexible responses. Unlike REST where endpoints return fixed data structures, GraphQL responses match the structure of the client's query, providing tailored responses for each request. Okay? Next is single endpoint. GraphQL APIs typically expose a single endpoint for all data fetching operations simplifying client server interactions compared to multiple rest endpoints okay it has a unified interface and reduced network traffic so clients interact with a single graphql endpoint to retrieve data thus eliminating the need to manage multiple urls and http methods for different resources and consolidating api request to a single endpoint can reduce network latency and improve performance especially for applications with complex data retrieval requirements and third is type system graphql strong type system provides a clear contract between clients and servers which offers better documentation 
and tooling support compared to loosely typed rest apis okay first thing here is schema definition and then schema validation the graphql schema serves as a contract between client and server defining the available types queries mutations and their corresponding fields and arguments and graphql schemas can be statically analyzed and validated providing early feedback to developers and ensuring api consistency and correctness now let's talk about implementing graphql implementing graphql first is server side implementation server side implementation graphql graphql servers can be implemented using various programming languages and frameworks such as apollo server express js graphql yoga and a lot more okay so here comes framework flexibility Developers have the flexibility to choose the most suitable framework for their GraphQL server implementation based on factors like language preference, performance requirements and ecosystem support. <clears throat> Next comes the middleware support. GraphQL frameworks offer middleware layers for handling authentication, authorization, caching, logging and other cross-cutting concerns. Okay. Next is schema definition. Developers define the GraphQL schema, okay, uh, including the types, queries, mutations, and resolvers to define the API's capabilities and behavior. It follows schema first approach. Schema first approach, and next is resolvers. So, GraphQL schemas are typically defined using the GraphQL schema definition language, providing a concise and expressive way to specify types and their relationships. And resolvers, what are resolvers? Resolvers are the functions responsible for fetching the data requested by clients and resolving GraphQL queries to concrete data values. Next is data sources. GraphQL servers integrate with various data sources including databases, REST APIs, and external services to fetch and manipulate data as requested by clients. Okay. Here, we'll talk about data fetching <coughs> and data manipulation. So, resolvers retrieve data from multiple sources aggregate data from different services or transform data before returning it to clients. GraphQL mutations enable clients to modify data stored in backend systems with resolvers handling the execution of mutation operations and ensuring data consistency. Okay. Now what are the advantages of GraphQL? So advantages of GraphQL. Efficient data fetching. GraphQL enables efficient data fetching by allowing clients to request only the data they need, reducing network overhead and improving performance. Clients can specify exactly which fields they need in their query, preventing unnecessary data from being transferred over the network. GraphQL responses contain all the requested data, eliminating the need for multiple round trips to server to fetch the related data. Like they will fetch everything and it will display only what you want. Okay. Next is flexibility and productivity. Flexibility and productivity. GraphQL's flexible query language and type system empower developers to iterate quickly, adapt to changing requirements and build dynamic applications. With GraphQL, developers can evolve APIs without breaking existing clients 
add new features seamlessly and experiment with new data structures and relationships. Clients can request data in the exact shape needed for their UI components, simplifying the client-side data management and reducing the need for multiple API endpoints. And third is strong typing. Strong typing. GraphQL's strong type system provides clear contracts between clients and servers, improving documentation, tooling support, and developer productivity. GraphQL schemas serve as a single source of truth for API contracts, enabling automatic validation of queries and mutations against the schema. IDEs and development tools can leverage GraphQL's type information to provide features such as auto-completion, type checking, and inline documentation. Okay, next let's talk about the challenges which are associated with GraphQL. Challenges. First is learning curve. Adopting GraphQL may require developers to learn new concepts including schema definition, query language syntax and resolver functions. Designing an efficient GraphQL schema requires understanding the domain model data relationships and best practices for defining types and fields. Developers need to optimize GraphQL queries to balance data granularity, network performance, and server load, especially in applications with complex data requirements. Next is server complexity. The other challenge associated with GraphQL. Implementing and maintaining a GraphQL server can be complex, especially when integrating with multiple data sources and managing resolver logic. Writing efficient resolver functions, handling data fetching, caching, and error handling can add complexity to server-side code. Monitoring and optimizing GraphQL server performance requires tools and techniques for identifying bottlenecks, analyzing query execution times, and optimizing data fetching strategies. And Caching and performance. GraphQL clients need to implement caching strategies and optimize network requests to ensure optimal performance and minimize data overfetching. Clients can cache GraphQL responses at various levels, like client side, on the CDN, server side, etc., to reduce redundant requests and improve app responsiveness. Batched requests and persistent queries can reduce network overhead and improve performance by combining multiple queries into a single HTTP request. Okay, now let's uh, talk about some of the real world examples where GraphQL is used and that will be the end of this video. So, real world examples. First is GitHub. So GitHub's GraphQL API allows developers to query for specific data points such as repositories, issues, and pull requests in a single request, improving performance and reducing API load. Developers can fetch only the information they need for their applications, reducing latency and improving user, user experience. Clients can tailor their queries to fetch precisely the data required for their use cases, eliminating the need for multiple API calls. Second example would be Shopify. Shopify's GraphQL API provides merchants with fine-grained control over their storefronts, enabling custom storefront designs, dynamic product listings, and personalized shopping experiences. Merchants can build custom storefronts that reflect their brand identity and offer unique shopping experiences to their customers. GraphQL subscriptions enable real-time updates for inventory changes, order status updates, and other critical events, enhancing the shopping experience. And next is Facebook. So Facebook's GraphQL powered newsfeed API optimizes data fetching for personalized news feeds, allowing client to request only the necessary data for each user's feed. GraphQL enables Facebook to deliver personalized news feeds tailored to each user preferences and interests. By fetching only the required data for each feed item, Facebook can minimize server load and improve overall system performance. Okay. So this was all about GraphQL. I hope this gives you a good idea about what 
graph ql is why graph ql is uh, required what are the limitations of rest and how those are fulfilled by graph ql so yeah that's all there was in this video thank you for watching please remember to like share and subscribe i will see you in the next one